Well, hi. We're from 7000 BC, as you just said. Um, 7000 BC is a uh, collective of comics creators from around the state. Um, uh, so I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff. I'm Ben. And uh, we're all part of 7000 BC. Technically, we're we're a nonprofit organization. We're all on the board, um, and we do we create comics together and help each other learn and help other people learn and, and do workshops and things like this um, and, and do some other events that we can tell you about if you're interested. Um, but I'd like to start this workshop on comics by asking you guys, what are comics? How, how do you define comics? What kind of stuff do you read? How can you see a comic? What makes it a comic? Um, I, I'm a Marvel Comics fan. I've been so all my life. Okay. So I've got a number of those books. And as far as what I would define, um, <laughs> um, I, I guess um, an animated story, I guess, would be my best definition for it. Animated story. Yeah, the illustrations that go along with the, with the animated okay. So how how is that different from an animated story on film? Well, it's got to be more precise. I mean, the limited pages that you're given in a comic book. Okay. So. That's one thing, it's not as detailed, but it gets to the heart of the matter quicker. Um, so, in, in the, the, the so writing, what's different about the, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I would say the writing is a little bit more, um, uh, lack of a better word, outgoing, or not more uh, exciting. <laughs> Maybe. Depends on who's right. <laughs> what the story is. Um, anybody else got a definition for what comics are? Uh, possible realities. Possible realities. That you can't really, you know, live in your, your functional life, I guess. <laughs> Superheroes. Okay. Supervillains, that sort of thing. Zombies. Like a break from reality? Yeah, a break from reality, yeah. Okay. I think it's ultimately it comes down to storytelling. It's a story. You know, okay. With illustrations. I mean, the story okay. takes a sequence of pictures. So what makes that different from, uh, say, a novel that, that has illustrations mm -hmm. with each chapter? And so that's the you know 
I only got us the big difference. You still have the script, you still have the words, but you don't have the many words. So we're going to sit here and stare at that. Who you want to talk about, Jeff? Who you want to talk about, Jeff? I don't know what I was writing. Oh, uh, specific, I both uh, write and draw. Okay. Um, okay and we do have some stuff up here if you guys at any point just want to look at I have pretty much the sum total of my writing library because I'm a writer here too. So On how to write. Yeah. Um, ben is an artist and does a little bit of writing. Uh, uh, he hasn't quite some time. He's getting back in. He's going to be great. You're going to be great, then. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff already knows. And, I mean, and the various people in our group do anything from, uh, uh, you know, writing or drawing, but they'll also specialize in, say, lettering, just doing the lettering on a comic or coloring. I kind of a lot of different jobs. One of the comics are odd in that they are a collaborative comic, but you spend most of your time working by yourself. And then when you're done, pass it, you pass it on to the next person and they do their part. What's that? This is one of these really comics. Excuse me? What do you say? Go ahead. This is why I just use some of the comment here, colleagues. Just put something in the margins or something. Yeah. Sorry, I'm comparing comment writing to programming. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so far one panel. These are these are panels, by the way, is, is the typical name for them. Sometimes you hear them called frames. But that is generally a term that's used for uh, Japanese comics, which are manga. That's, what they're called. that's where you hear that more commonly. Um, in American comics, you usually hear them called panels. And that line in between the panels, it's called the gutter. And that's where all the action is. Okay, 
so what makes this a comp? We've got what? It's a sequence. It's a sequence. Okay. Um, if you were to see something like this 500 years ago, comics as we know them generally uh, began about 100 years ago, right around 1900, is what we generally think of as comics. Sorry. So if you were to see this 500 years ago, you might look at this and say, oh, there's, you know, there's a guy with a hat and then uh, and maybe he's behind a window and that's why we've got this here. And then there's another guy behind another window who kind of looks the same, and he's, you know, maybe it's his brother. Or you might look at it and say, oh, the artist drew this guy behind the window and then decided he didn't like it and drew this other version of the same guy behind the window. You wouldn't necessarily read it as a comic because that wasn't something that you knew. So what's the story with this comic? I mean, you say there's, there's not much story, right? But but what happens here in this comic? Takes off his hat. Takes off his hat, okay. What is he greeting? He's greeting? Yeah. Hello. There you go. Okay. Anybody got another story here? Does anybody read uh, any manga, Japanese comics? He could be putting his hat on. He's putting, oh, his, hat he's on. putting his hat on, yeah. In Japan, you read the opposite direction. So you would be reading this panel first, and then this panel. Comics are something we, we understand because our culture teaches us this is what a comic is, and this is how it works. Because we've gotten used to seeing it that way. Um, and if this was a Japanese comic, he's putting his hat on. Um, and like Chuck was talking about earlier, you know, where does he actually take his hat off? It's right here, in the middle. Because here we have a picture of a guy with a hat on. Here we have a picture of a guy holding a hat over his head. He doesn't actually do it except right here with your imagination. You're actually completing the story as you read it. And that's, that's the thing that really makes comics different from another medium. Um, if, you're, if you're reading a novel that has pictures in it, you're trying to tell a whole chunk of the story in one picture, or just capture one moment that's important. But, and, and if this was animated, you would have, you know, 47 pictures creating this because you had to draw each and every instant in between. So this is really what, what makes comics different is that you as the reader are participating in creating that story. Um, and depending on whether or not you have enough information or not enough information, that's the real trick in making a comic that works. Um, because even with something this simple, we had a couple of different versions of what that story is. We had, he's taking off his hat, and we had, he's greeting someone. And without more information, you don't know which of those it really is. So we've got some paper, we've got some pencils. And the first thing you guys get to do is draw in two or three panels, a comic, and make something happen. That's all you have to do is just make something happen. So, so we'll take a few minutes and do that, and then we'll look at some. And one of the things he did with this comic is that um, he did the same thing we did with this one which is this. If this is looking through a camera, you're looking at the same picture both times in both panels. A lot of you didn't do that. Todd, uh, okay, so Todd did 
this one where walking the dog and falls in a, in a manhole. And the dog is left there just to wonder when he's getting there. That's not a real life thing, is it? I could be on the Oh, it's cute. Okay. So, going down. So uh, he's got a shifting perspective, but the camera is almost still on a tripod, so the camera is just sort of shifting a little bit each time. Uh, and then, uh, can I show yours? You can. <laughs> you can't, uh, a long, this, a long shot here of football players on the field. And then, I assume he's catching it there? Yeah. Yeah. And touchdown, I assume, or, or is that an interception? The catch was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've gone from a long shot that shows a whole lot of stuff to something very specific. When it gets exciting, I don't want to see the guy that really did it. That changed the game. Um, that's one of the things that's, that's always interesting in comics is that you can go through, um, you can start off with one picture and you can keep changing what you're looking at. And you have far more ability to do that than in any other medium. If you're doing this on film, well, if you're going to change your camera angle, that's a whole bunch of money. So you got to plan what you're going to do and be very careful that you don't, that you really need that other shot. With comics, if, if you want to move the camera over there, you want to move the camera over there, it doesn't matter. You just do it. Yeah, it's one of the big advantages in comics. So, one of the things, Chuck, you want to mm -hmm. talk about this? With, with comics is that generally if you're, if you're doing a big comic, you're going to start by um, no, here, I'll show you this real quick. And then we'll have Chuck talk about how you write a script for a comic. Um, because when you're writing a script for a comic, you're, you're partly describing what those panels are going to be and what your camera angles are going to be, all that kind of thing. So here's uh, my very brief history of panels in comics, in just a few panels, <laughs> just a few pages. Um, comics started out by being exactly what, uh, who was that? The first comic I showed Charles had, <laughs> where it's the same picture every time. And that's because when comics started in 1900, if you were gonna see some kind of entertainment, go out for the evening and, and have a story told to you, the only option to really do that was you would go to the theater. And so if you go to the theater, the curtain goes up and there's the set, and you're looking at, you know, one scene. And everything happens on that one scene until the curtain comes back in again. Um, so when comics started, they started being something like vaudeville, where you'd have goofy little stories, but you were always just sitting there as an observer, watching it in the same way. Um, pretty quickly they started figuring out that you didn't have to stay right there and you could start playing with the, how, you, how you showed what was in a panel. Um, here's from Little Nemo in Slumberland from 1907, I think. And it's uh, Little Nemo uh, is sitting on the stoop and everything starts shrinking and it shrinks more and more until he's just on the earth, an old man, uh, is it 1908? Mm 
I guess, 19, old man 1908 falls off the earth and baby New Year 1909 comes down and lands on the earth. So it was a New Year's comic. Um, by the 50s, uh, films had become popular and uh, people were, had figured out that with comics you don't need to stick to anything. This is a comic from about 1953 and the entire comic is people sitting at a dinner table talking. And there's a few pictures of what they're talking about, but mostly it's just people sitting at a dinner table talking, and there's no two panels that look at all the same all the way through this comic. Um, more recently, television has, come, has become more popular, and that's more the kind of thing that we see and so you see a lot more stuff like this now where you are seeing the same image all the way through, but it's usually played with in some other way. In this one, there's a whole design that goes underneath the background of all of them, even though it's, uh, it's, it's still just the two characters sitting there in every panel. And Okay, and here's um, starting to play with the whole idea of what those panels are. Are those panels you know, just a world in their own? Or can we make them three-dimensional and have that become alive? And have them open up and reveal the entire world? So, so there's my very brief history of the panels and comics. <laughs> Um, Chuck's going to talk a little bit about how he writes scripts. Yeah, um, this is actually the first thing that we had published, thanks to joining 7000 BC. And uh, it's kind of based on a true story. And uh, it's uh, the first one of the uh, stories that I wrote for uh, kind of morality tales for elementary school kids. And uh, this, the, the thing about comics is about 99% of them, maybe more, starts with a script. Even a comic that doesn't have words, you've seen a few of those, I'm sure, um, has to have a script because you have to know where you're going. You have to know, you know, you have to have a description of what you're, what you're putting on. So, in this case, um, I had my artist, Paul, uh, I just wrote, wrote the script, and what you see over here on, on, the, uh, on the, the right, on the left, the left, uh, this was the description that I gave. Cover, full body shot of Andre, light skin, mixed race, blue boy, five to seven, baggy blue jeans, Nike swoosh t-shirt, hands behind his back like he's about to speak. Now, the artist isn't always going to do everything you want him to do. Uh, either they don't understand what it is you're, you're trying to get to. There's no Nike swoosh. <laughs> so can you get to the next one? And uh, the first page of the script is a picture of Andre waving to the reader. His face is troubled. Uh, so page one, panel one. Right, page is, one, panel the, one. The important. That's right, yeah. Each, each, each action is depicted in a panel. And so the panels aren't like, you know, they're, they're not like a, a comic script or a comic, uh, you know, like ones you've seen where you have gutters. There's no gutters in this comic. But uh, you get the idea anyway. And uh, it's just Andre, uh, you know, I said, uh, let's see, uh, his face is troubled, and I think he did a really fine job with that. And then panel two, you've got, like, I don't know, have you ever seen Beetle Bailey? You know how they always get everybody getting in a fight and you've got like a fist up here and leg down here and stuff like that. That's kind of what I, what I wanted him to do there. And that's, he, he pretty much did that. That's perfect. And that's uh, Jimmy and Andre fighting and he's trying to explain why he's, you know, why he's uh, getting kicked out of school, basically. And so uh, his grandpa says that, uh, you know, one fight is, is one fight too many, so he's trying to tell him that, uh, you know, he shouldn't be fighting. And on count three, you've got to show a picture of Jimmy, he's a tough kid, striped shirt, 
Where's that at? Uh -oh. Aha! You kind of blew that one right off. Except for except for part of the uh, that's actually panel two. Panel three would be uh, genome, which is dead. Interesting. Okay. Well, that that explains it right there. I didn't even notice this. I never even noticed this. I was just so excited that Paul actually drew it. Um, he did the work from my from my script, and I think he did it better. That's the other thing. Um, a lot of writers are very, very specific. Um, Alan Moore, the guy, who, like, you ever read Watchmen? You, know, you guys know about Watchmen? Probably the greatest comic ever made by most people's estimation. And uh, Alan Moore is very, very, very descriptive of what he wants. He wants you to put exactly what you put. And if you don't do that, then you, know, you have to go back and change it. Alan's a, he's a really a harsh pass master as a well. But when you're you know doing something like this, like nobody got paid. You know, so it's not like uh, like Paul had to do exactly what I wanted to do. But Paul is more experienced than I am. So Paul actually made it better, even though it doesn't actually follow the script. And then you got like uh, panel four there is you know the, the, the aerial view of the houses and stuff. So go ahead and next page. And then we're, then we're in page two, and uh, panel one, that's uh, Andre's mom and, his, and a picture of his dad. That's all, you know, it's kind of like laying haphazardly on the table. And then you've got the next panel, which is uh, Andre's dad leaving, and Julia, you know, trying to get him to come back, and Andre's playing with his, with his dolls and stuff. And then uh, panel three is a picture of me and Andre talking. This is, like I said, this is a true story, and this actually did happen. Uh, I was talking to talking to Andre, and then I, I just told him, I said, uh, what, you know, what, do you, what do you and Jimmy have in common? So the fourth panel down here at the bottom, you know, showed a pro con list with Andre on one side and uh, Jimmy on the other. And they're both like, uh, they're both kids, they're both five years old. They both live on the same street, like to watch TV, play video games, they both have moms, they both go to the same school. But the other thing you have to, with a script, you generally have to put down uh, the point of view. It's called POV. And that is when you, you tell the artist what point of view you're looking at it from. Like, in other words, uh, you have like a, a, like a, a, a half, half body shot of Andre and me sitting at the table. Uh, the second one would be the POV would be, you know, um, from, the vantage point of seeing, you know, pointing, uh, looking at the door, and Andre in the foreground, and Julia and uh, his dad, under his dad leaving, and who knows dad's name is. But uh, the next, and the next one, Jeff. And so uh, Andre with a thoughtful look on his face, holding his chin in his hand as he's thinking, gee, I guess we really aren't that different, are we? And so uh, he makes a list of all the things that they have in common. And so he, uh, the second panel is uh, me handing the, the notebook to Andre saying, go, you know, go talk to Jimmy and see what you got. So he writes down all the things they have in common. And the third panel there is just asking Jimmy, Jimmy, what do you like? Do you like this? Do you like that? What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite ice cream? Stuff like that. And then once they realize that they have so much more in common, then they can be pals, and that's kind of the happy ending for the story. But the way that Paul depicted this, you know, is I, I think excellent because Jimmy's kind of got a suspicious look on his face there, you know, and Andre's trying to be helpful. And so he kind of wins it over, and uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty much what happens. So you can see, even though the script was written one way, drawn the other way, I think Paul actually made it better. And sometimes that'll happen, sometimes it won't. But uh, the one thing that you, uh, the, 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 I, I did some research on this and I also found out that Stan Lee, you know who Stan Lee is, right? Stan Lee says you shouldn't put more than 28 words in a pen. Otherwise it becomes, it becomes too wordy and it's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, too verbose. 
And that's the thing about taking it from words to the pictures is like I was saying before, you know, you you have your you know your your a lot of your words that you read in a novel just get taken away because because you have the pictures and the description. So that's pretty much it. Anybody got any questions or comments? Questions? It's interesting that you did specify how big you wanted some of the panels and half the time he did it and half the time he, he didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well see the, this is actually just gonna be a, a three page thing for for strength, which is our uh, anthology that seven thousand BC puts out almost once a month. And we just uh, you know it was just gonna be a, a, a little thing for that and then after this got published and I wrote a third one, a second one, and now I'm in the process of writing the third one, I just sent Paul the third script. And it's funny because this one turned out to be like four pages. Uh, the second one is like eight pages, and the third one is something like 11 or 12 pages. So they're getting longer. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a question of you know going from, from words to pictures. Um, so, if you're if you're creating a story, any kind of story, um, doesn't have to be a comic. What are the things that that you, you that you put in a story? What are the different elements of a story? If you're going to tell a story, what do you have to have in there? Character, events. What else do you need? Where is your story going to take place? Say. Setting, okay, so. Yeah. Those are sort of the big things. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe, maybe a theme, that's more of a theme, or a So I'm gonna, so, yeah. yeah. Or an emotion, is that what you said? Emotion, or an emotion. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few things. Uh, character setting and event are the three big ones that I usually like to talk about. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of those. So character. One of the nice things with comics is that you can tell a lot about a character just from a single drawing, once you, once you see the character. Um, so these are both characters from the X-Men. Their outfits are a little bit different, but just from a glance at them, you know, which one do you want to meet in a dark alley? <laughs> which one do you want to hang out and eat popcorn and watch television with? You know? <laughs> um, Has anybody here read Bone? Yeah. Bone's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, first, okay. Somebody that hasn't read Bone, what do you, what do you think these three characters are like? Who hasn't read Bone? Okay, what do you think these three characters are like? Um, I guess it'd be different. One of them is angry, one of them is and one of them like, Angry, scared, uh, and one of those like in his own mind, <laughs> sort of happy go lucky. Yeah, that's all you need to know about those three characters. There's an entire enormous uh, story that's as as big as Lord of the Rings that is, takes place, and that's all you need to know about these guys. That's that's where they begin, <laughs> and just from that one drawing, you know those those characters. Um, this is from a book that I'm working on, and, and it's two stories. One is a, about a boy from contemporary times. One is about a, a boy from 1800. And which is which? Which is the contemporary boy? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just in the way that it's drawn. It's telling you something about them. Um, so event, here's a few different things about events. Uh, 
This is one by Rick, who's another member of our group. Co coyote Bathtub presents, once there was a very hungry coyote who found a magic lamp. He took it home to make tea. <laughs> it's just laying out, okay, here's, here's the event. Let's get going. <laughs> he ends up uh, getting a magic hot dog out of the lamp and it's gonna grant him a bunch of wishes, but he's too hungry, so he eats it. Um, here's from the far side. There's an event happening here. There's a couple of events. One of the really brilliant things with the far side, um, it's tough to do a comic that has just one picture. But one of the really brilliant things with the far side is that he almost always has something down, written down below. And this one, the real reason dinosaurs became extinct. You could read that first and then look at the picture and you'd laugh. Or you could look at the picture and then read that and you'd laugh. Either one is the setup or the punchline. They're interchangeable. That's, that's what makes Farside brilliant. <laughs> um, here's uh, Crazy Cat, which is a fantastic comic that ran many years ago. Um, and the basic story of Crazy Cat is that we've got Ignat's mouse here who just wants to throw a brick at Crazy Cat's head. And every time a brick hits Crazy Cat's head, Crazy Cat says, oh, another present from my love, Ignat's mouse. And Officer Pup is constantly trying to stop Ignat's mouse from throwing a brick at Crazy Cat. And that's it, that's the story. And this, this comic ran for 33 years. Every day he told that story in a different way and, that, and, and an interesting way. And that's why <laughs> that's, this is really considered one of the best comic strips ever done. Here's another one where uh, Ignatz is picking up a brick, hauling it up to the roof so that, so that uh, she can, he can drop it on uh, Crazy Cat's head. And uh, Officer Pup sees the brick going up and says, oh, I must stop this, cuts the line, and the brick falls on Crazy Cat's head. Um, and setting. This is from Puma Blues, which was a comic back in the 80s. This is a pretty simple couple of pages. There's a lot of animals running around, hissing, making noises. It's the sounds of the forest at night. But can you imagine this in a, any other setting? Could you imagine this in the mall? I mean, you've got a whole different story. Um, there Will Come Soft Rains, which is a Ray Bradbury story adapted into comics. And this is a story that takes place after uh, the world has had a, an apocalypse and no one is left, but the world is a future world where everything is, is uh, automated. And so every day the little robots make toast and tea and eggs and set it out for everyone and then the cleaner robots come and they clean it all up because nobody's eaten it and, it, and the story just goes through the day of day in the life of the city so the setting is the setting becomes the characters um, and here's Calvin and Hobbes Spaceman Spiff story so where does this where does this comic take place? Imagination. Imagination, yeah. This, plant, this comic is taking place at the dinner table. <laughs> and it's his imagination that's, you're both right. It's his imagination that's telling the story. Um, and just to make it clear that it really is important, here's um, from Peanuts. Here's uh, Lucy trying to teach Sally to to jump rope. And all we've got for setting is a couple of little scribbles in the background there. So where is this taking place? This is, you know, at a park somewhere or somewhere. But if we had that last, the last uh, Calvin and Hobbes strip, if we put that in there, you've got, again, a whole different story. <laughs> so there's my 
brief discussion on character, event, and setting. So I think the next thing we're going to do is, uh, on a new piece of paper, have you each come up with a character, an event, and a setting. And you can describe them in just... What do you do now? Um, you know, you as the artist, um, if you're the artist and the writer, whatever that ends up being, um, it's your job to basically translate, you know, those words into something that you can actually draw and you can actually kind of um, represent somehow on the page. Um, this <clears throat> very rough, you know, sketchy kind of stuff is literally drawn with a pen on some paper, just you know, just at like a lunch break, just you know. So the idea is to just kind of do what, what we traditionally call like a breakdown. Uh, breakdowns are um, you start kind of mapping out. Okay, so I have you know you know what your page size is going to be. You know, hopefully you've talked about this or at least thought about it. If you get a full piece of paper in half and you know that's two pages, so you have you have a finite amount of space you have to work with. Now, how do you take that script and turn it into the appropriate words? Um, some writers will give you the you know, page one, panel one, panel two, panel three. Um, other writers, um, you know, will just literally just write out kind of a prose story and just hand it to you and let you decide it. Um, there's no right or wrong way. Um, it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. So you as the artist take that script and start breaking it down into, uh, I, I think I want to tell what's on that page uh, again, if he gave you three panels, then I have three panels to work with. If you're going free form and you don't really have a panel count, you, look, you have to look at it and say, okay, well, this is what's happening. How am I going to represent that? So this is the initial breakdown on the first page of, of something I was doing. It was just real rough. I kind of wanted to have a ship coming into view against uh, you know, space, you know, with a planet there. Um, and then the next panel I wanted to have, you know, the ship kind of coming down, so you kind of get the idea that it's coming in for a landing, and then the third panel being like the, the landing is touching down. Um, you want to the next one, please? Um, so from the rough uh, breakdowns, I go into a little bit more finished penciling, and this is still pretty rough, but I'm still kind of start, starting to block in shapes and block in things, because I want to get to a point where I know where it's at. So this would be the next stage and then the next one. Uh, this is actually the finished page. Um, so again, I'm taking a lot of those shapes and I, I, as you can see here, I think I actually made the ship a lot bigger than I, I had originally intended because um, I really wanted to have, have the ship be a little bigger focus of that panel. Um, no, that doesn't make yeah. a difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one. Uh, this is another page. Um, you know, again, taking this one actually had very specific uh, panel breakdowns for from the, from the writer. Um, I was supposed to do a mirrored uh, layout. So uh, this one, you know, basically the panel here, I don't even remember what page this is, 12. So the next page had the exact same layout, just completely flipped. So there's a circle up on the top right on this one. Uh, Again, very specific layout, so I just had to kind of plot the action within that, that layout. Um, so again, this is my real rough pencils. I start plot, kind of blocking in the characters and, and just kind of real, real rough ideas of kind of where things are going to be. Um, and then I start to kind of add, I knew there was a lot of dialogue in this, so I wanted to just start kind of setting aside some places for that dialogue as well. Uh, next one. Again, kind of a little bit uh, further along, this is one. This is still my pencils, but this is a little bit more finished pencils. Um, I kind of do everything in more passes. So I do like an initial pass, and then I come back and do a second pass, and then I do an inking pass, and then I do a coloring pass. So this would be the a little bit more finished pencils. Same idea, just kind of taking those shapes and really kind of defining them, locking them, in so I can start blocking out shadows and where things are going to be. Uh, next one, please. Uh, this is the inking. Uh, 
Um, so again, you take out all that scratch work. Um, and so this is the actual inks that go on the page. Um, I haven't blocked in the black areas yet, but um, I'm just getting those black lines. In. Next one. How much of this is computer? Um, for me personally, probably the first, most of the breakdowns are probably uh, pen and paper. So, um, so this is still paper here. This one. It looks like paper because of where you get the rubber. Yeah, I think this is actually paper. So I, I actually, I made myself a template um, a while back that I just, uh, you, you can buy um, 11 by 17 uh, comic book pages, blue line pages. So they're basically they're printed blue to a nice big 11 by 7, 17 sheet of paper. Um, and they'll have all these little hash marks on here. They'll kind of give, you know, just give you some guides if you're going to put um, borders and their uh, gutters and stuff like that. Um, for my own process, I actually made one. I do a lot of digital work. So I actually have a, a tablet that I draw on. Um, so what that's done for me is it, it kind of cuts out some of the process. I don't have to do as much on paper. I don't have to ink on paper. I actually do all of my inking digitally. Um, so it, it kind of lets me fudge around a lot more. I can jump back and forth between places because I'm not stuck to, okay, now I finished my pencils and now I'm going to bring over that and I'm going to ink that and I'm going to erase it all and I'm going to scan it. I can just like, I can be still working on pencils while I'm inking them. Like if I, I for instance, let's just say I had this panel down and I was fine with it, I was good, I didn't, there was nothing I wanted to change. I could actually ink it and still be penciling these ones. But that's just, that's the way that digital works is um, it just kind of opens up some of the boundaries. Um, the process becomes less linear. You still have to pencil, you still have to ink, you still have to do color. You don't necessarily have to do it always in that order um, for the entire page. I mean, generally, you wouldn't, you wouldn't ink Traditionally, you would not ink a page or a part of a page before you were done with the, the whole penciling. I don't think you would ink that much way that would. Um, you would finish all the penciling and then finish all the inking and then finish all the coloring. Um, and generally, all comics these days are printed from a digital file, yes. which is why we're talking about having make it digital and that being a, cutting a step out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm cutting up that scanning stuff at the end because the file is actually created digitally. I don't have to take a finished thing and scan it and then clean it up. I'm just pretty much ready to go. As soon as I'm done with the page, it's ready to print. Um, so yeah, this is like I said, this is the inks. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. And it's kind of dark. Um, I have a virtual video you guys can come check out. But um, so this one is it's colored. So I did a lot of my shading. I did a lot of the, the shadows. Um, you know, especially stuff like this where I really wanted to have a little bit of glow. Um, let's, you know, for instance, just like in a panel or something like that, I wanted to have a little bit of that glow so you can kind of catch a little bit of that glow. Um, you, you kind of just have your light sources and stuff like that. Um, just go to the next one. Um, yeah, here's the flip side of that page. So like I said, I have the circle up here. And this was, like I said, this, this layout was dictated to me. I mean, not always is it going to be quite like this, but this one was very, very specific. Um, so, again, you have to kind of start blocking those, those word balloons because that's the worst thing is you draw this great image and then you realize, oh, I want to say something and then you go back and like, oh, I didn't, I didn't put any room in, you know, to put that, that word balloon in there. And then you end up having to like fudge things and, and kind of cover up your image, you know, to, to make space for this. So if you kind of at least guesstimate, um, ahead of time you kind of add some of those spaces and you, you kind of cover yourself you know you know I'm going to have a lot of words happening here so I, I can kind of you know create the, the actual image outside of there I and mean, I still need to put some stuff in there but you know that as those words kind of come in um, I'm not going to be covering up anything critical um, and next one and this one again is, is a little bit more of that, that second pass the, the more finished pencils um, Starting to kind of block things in a little bit, block in some of the blacks. Uh, next one, and then, then this is the finished page. Um, and same thing, I mean, just kind of create your highlights and figure out what, where the light sources are at, and uh, uh, you 
know, just kind of take those 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 black things and then start to color that. So, uh, is there any more for that? Oh yeah, it's a oh, chicken. Oh, love you chicken. chicken. Um, <laughs> so I had to create a monster, <laughs> a really big monster. <laughs> Whatever reason I'm doing a space chicken. Um, <laughs> the multi-eyed space chicken. Um, so this was this was gonna be like a splash page. A splash page, if, you, if you've never heard that term before. Um, a splash page is uh, it's a full page. Uh, one page that takes up it, or one panel that takes up the entire page. Basically um, an illustration. Yeah, pretty much. I mean it just begins like um, so if if you're reading a comic, I'm gonna do this backwards because I so if you're reading a comic, you know, you go top, you know, the next line like that, um, the splash pages actually kind of create a dramatic break, you know. Um, they make your, your eye kind of stop and, and, you know, just take in this whole, you know, big image. Uh, and they're used a lot for dramatic effect. They're used a lot for if you want to, uh, you know, if you wanted to introduce a new character and he's walking out of the scene, you know, you can splash page, here it is, you know, kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they, they have a lot of uses, um, and it's a way to kind of break up the action a little bit too, because you're kind of just like interjecting. Pay attention to this. You know, that's the whole kind of point. Is it's one big page you have to pay attention to. If any, um, if any of you have ever read the death of Superman, they decided that that was a dramatic enough story that every single page is a splash page. Yeah, yeah and that's been done before. And sometimes I'll do a whole comic that's just nothing but splash pages. Um, and it works. I mean, you know, if the if the dramatic, um, if the tone for the, the book works, obviously. But you know, generally speaking, um, you know, use them sparingly because they are kind of a crutch, um, and use them uh, when they they make the most sense. Um, so anyway, this is my rough pencils. This was actually a sketch I did, I think, in a sketchbook, um, just for fun. And I ended up taking it, deciding I wanted to make this into like one of the last pages of the book. So, uh, initial pencils, second pass of pencils. So this is actually kind of putting it onto my template, and then starting to figure out uh, spacing a little bit. And you, you notice from the, go back one more. You notice from here where the ship is that big, and I go forward one to this one. I, it made more sense for the ship to be a lot smaller. To kind of Kind of create a difference in scale. You know, I really wanted this to be a really big thing, and I kind of opened it up a little bit too. He's, he doesn't take up quite as much of the image. Um, there's still those you know moons in the background, and he's basically coming up out of the clouds. So I really wanted to um, change. And again, digital, you can kind of do this. I mean, traditionally, if I didn't like something, you erase it and start over. And in digital, I can like, eh, I can just you know adjust it or move it around. Um, and that's what I did with this one. I took those initial pencils and I just kind of expanded on them digitally. Um, so again, you know, kind of changed the scale, changed the, the, the lighting, the placement a little bit, not the lighting, sorry, the placement, um, to kind of create that sense of scale. Um, next one. Actually, I want to point out something. Oh, yeah. So you can, if you look close, you can see here's the edge of, oh, yeah, yeah. of the paper that was his original sketch and you can't really tell it on this but on my screen you can tell that this has been sort of chunked out of here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and again i mean digital just lets you do a lot of stuff um you know you can grab a, a section of it and then move it over here or rearrange things um, i've had i've had whole panels i'll take the panel out and move it from over here to over here because sometimes i'm looking at it and i'm going back through it all before it's printed of course but uh, you're just going back through it like, yeah, I, th I really think this moment happens or works better over here. And sometimes all that, it'll even change the story a little bit. Um, if, if there's something that's happening sequentially and, you know, if this happens over here, sometimes it makes more sense for it to happen over here. Or you can, I mean, that's not the norm, obviously, but, um, you know, it just gives you the ability to kind of really rework things and play with your timing and space and stuff like that. Uh, because really, you know, every panel is a moment in time. Every panel is a, uh, it, it's a snapshot of, of something. So sometimes you read, it's like if, if, for instance, if you were to take pictures of a party, let's just say you had a party at your house and you had a snapshot camera up going chick, 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 every 15 minutes, and you laid out all those pictures on the table, you could kind of rearrange them a little bit and actually tell a different story. It's kind of an interesting thing. Um, 
it's just, you know, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you, sometimes you can kind of rearrange the images and, and they have different effects. Sometimes you didn't even plan on it. Um, I don't have any examples of that, unfortunately. But, uh, uh, anyway. Actually, you do, because you did the, you moved the show. Well, yeah, yeah, I did. And, and again, well, that actually, you're right, right, because I, I, wanted, I wanted to really play with the scale between this big, giant monster and, you know, this little tiny ship, and it go back more and more. You know, um, you know, again, look here, I mean, there's a sense of scale, but it's, it's different. I mean, you don't quite get the sense of how big this monster really is until you go to the, yeah. So, you know, just kind of rearranging elements a little bit, you can, you can kind of play with things. Change the tone or change the uh, the effect really. Um, so I go to the next one, please. Okay, and this was my uh, digital pen or digital inking. So I was like, actually inking this one, and then go one more. So this was the finished uh, finished page and dramatic little word bubble there. Um, and I, you know, ultimately, I mean, I think this this worked better. I, I think it did anyway. To kind of put that ship farther up and smaller, um, so it basically wasn't flying right into his mouth, and I just wanted to kind of create this little moment of tension um, to be made. Um, is there any more of that? Uh, there's oh yeah, there's that. <laughs> and so let's continue. Um, so this is the page that actually hasn't been printed yet. Um, so the idea was to take what happened over there and then, you know, so how do we get away and just kind of zip them around the ship? And this is an instance of using one static image of the monster, but using the ship four times. So um, it kind of, it's a little trick, but it lets you kind of create more than one panel in one panel to an extent. You can kind of create, and I did kind of block them off these little black borders, but they didn't really work very well. Um, the idea was to create Okay, I want you, you the reader, you the person looking at this to understand that, yes, there's one image of the monster moving, but there's this, this quick movement of the, the ship flying around. And you can do that by just you know, using the same image, but drawing the ship in four times, five times, ten times, whatever it takes to, to kind of do it. Um, and it kind of creates, again, you know, because every panel is a, is a little moment of time, in, this, in, in the small effect, it kind of makes you realize that he's actually moving slower than anything else. I mean, if, if the ship was able to do that in four, four movements, and he was only able to do that one movement, it kind of creates a little, hopefully, uh, subliminal message that, that he's really slow, and the ship is, like, you know, zipping around, so. Uh, next one? Or is that um, it? Oh, oh, yes, that's okay. So another one of my my breakdown pages, um, as you can see, this was done on, on you know blue lined paper. Uh, actually, I think it was paper. anyway. Um, this was actually done to the back of the car. I was driving, and or I was not driving. Sorry, I'm not driving. I was in the back seat. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Not even drives all the time. <laughs> um, so we went on that trip. It was like four hours to Durango or something like that. I was in the back seat. Had a couple hours, and so I decided to plot out the story. Um, so this is one of the pages I did, which is a breakdown page. Um, and I mean, very very simple stick figure, almost. You know, a character standing there. Um, I knew I wanted to have a panel up here of kind of the door opening, and then a big shot of like her standing in front of the ship, and the ship, you know, being behind her, and a little ramp coming down, and boom, there she is. Um, and this this is called a thumbnail. Yeah, um, and it's. Basically, the size of your thumbnails. <laughs> yeah. Depends how big you have to go. So a little bit more than that, usually. But um, well, it depends on how many panels you're putting on the page. But it's it's just a rough. But it's important to do that so that you know what your page is going to look like because uh, you don't know when if you just start drawing it, you don't know if you're going to end the, get to the end of the page and go, oh, I needed one more thing there, or or that thing back at the beginning was actually the big important part, and I should have drawn that much yeah. bigger. Yeah. 
it just kind of gives you, it, it's, it's a sketch. I mean, it's like, it's like just giving you an option before you lay anything down solid or concrete or even really start the process. You could just kind of like, eh, this works, eh, this, ah, oh, no, that doesn't work, ah, oh, that doesn't work. Okay, this one works, you know. It just kind of gives you a quick little rough, rough version of kind of how you want to depict these, these things in your head. Um, and they can be everything from little scribbles to stick figures to, um, you know, to, to more drawn out, more kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I mean, truth be told, even the beginning stages of the pencil, I always start with that, that kind of skeleton. So if, even if I haven't done um, a, a rough or a, a thumbnail like this ahead of time, I still kind of create that real quickly. And that's the very first time the pencil hits paper is, is I'm kind of creating that rough image. Um, uh, next one. And a lot of writers actually do give the artist a yes. thumbnail. Yeah. Sketch. Yeah. You know, or like this is what I'm thinking. Oh, just this is what right. This is this is the you know what I'm thinking about doing in this panel. Yeah. I yeah. don't because I can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> and then this would be like the, the kind of pencil stage. Um, the one thing that's different again digital um, is I wanted to start kind of blocking in some of the shadows, so I kind of do um, ahead of time kind of where the, the dark areas were gonna be. Um, and then one other thing too is I ended up adding an extra panel here. Um, kind of last minute, um, where you actually, you know, the door, the whoosh, you know, the foosh of the door, um, but I wanted to have, you know, you see your foot. Yeah, it's, that, it's that same thing. I mean, you ever seen a science fiction movie, the door comes down, the, you know, the light, and then you see the foot, you know. It's the same thing, you just create that little moment of what's going to happen, you know. Um, and then boom, you know, boom, there she is, so, um, and, you know, shit in the background. So, uh, next one. Finished pencil, or I'm sorry, finished inks. Um, and actually, this one has just a little beginning stages of coloring, which I'm just starting to add in a little bit of that, that shadow. Um, again, just kind of you know taking that that, that finished pencil version of it and then inking it and going over it and, and creating you know the lines and kind of cleaning it up. Really. Um, uh, next one. Oscar. Oh, yeah, it's a little um, yeah, it's kind of a dark comic. I didn't really mean it to be very dark. It was sort of, sort of came out that way, especially on the screen. Uh, you know, again, kind of just the finished version of it with the, you know, the shadows and the, or the colors. I say colors, it's actually colored in black and white, but, um, but yeah, that, that's, that's about it on that one. <coughs> sheet of paper I did the other one, so I mapped out all five pages of this initial story on that same line, line of paper when I was driving for in the back seat of the car. Uh, and, you know, there's some little artist tips for me, stuff that I wanted to kind of create. I wanted to create uh, this, this scene where she's walking towards the camera, um, and, you know, I put my little arrows there so I know which what was happening. Um, it's, you know, sometimes it's kind of silly, you know, you think to yourself, oh, I'll remember what that's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, every once in a while, I'll walk away from something and come back. You know, I know real life, so I don't do this, you know, eight to five. I'll do something and maybe a week before I get back to it. Um, and I'll look at it and be like, I have no idea what I was thinking about here. <laughs> um, so sometimes I'll add little notes on the side or tell myself what I was trying to do here, trying to accomplish. And hopefully, um, you know, remind myself you know, kind of what I was doing, so when I actually get back to it, I have a little bit better understanding. Because sometimes, I mean, these are pretty rough. These are these are rough sketches, and what you know, those lines at, at one time made a lot of sense to me. I'm looking looking at it again. I'm like, I don't know what I was planning there. Um, so anyway, this is rough. Just kind of break down again. You know, kind of wanted to sort of reuse the same scene three times, but you know, have her head getting bigger and bigger. Um, Kind of denoting as, as she's getting closer to the camera. Making sure that you keep the ship the same size. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. To um, give you a sense of perspective. Exactly. Um, you know, I know I wanted to have kind of a long shot of her looking out of this valley. And then, you know, the, the, the original intention was, okay, so she jumps down, she walks over, and then she climbs up something. That, that was my error. Um, I was wondering what that last up was. You go back up to the... Uh, <laughs> like a maze. Well, okay, then...
the first five pages of this little story I did um, were done without a script. Um, they, they literally, that me sitting in the back of that car was writing, that was my script. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have anything to go off of. I just decided I wanted to tell a quick little story of five pages and half, you know, this girl went on a planet, go find a monster, and that was it. So I, I kind of pl planned out five pages of girl lands on, on monster, on a planet, gets out of her ship, goes hiking across and finds a monster. That was it. Um, so this is my script, so to speak. And, and again, that was kind of it. You know, I wanted her to jump down, you know, establish the idea she's on a cliff, jump down the cliff, you know, a shot of her like walking across this, the, the, the way, I guess, the, the background. Um, and then another shot of her climbing up the mountain. So, you know, there's a mountain over here, she's gonna walk, walk, or jump down, walk across, and climb up. Um, uh, next one. So yeah, again, this is kind of the, the more finished pencils. I changed things up a little bit to kind of, kind of, hopefully, better relate that that information. So she's going to be staying on this cliff. Um, not really. I didn't do a really great job with this, but kind of wanted to have her sort of looking through like the monocular or something like that. Like she spots something over there. That's where she wants to go. Um, you know, gets out a rope. You know, secures it to a rock and then jumps down with the rope instead of just like, jumping off. Um, and then, you know, another scene of her just kind of walking across carrying her sword. Um, next one, finish things, um, and then next one. I think we should stop there. If you're interested in doing this, um, in creating a comic, the, the group is open to anyone. We have everybody from full-time professionals through people who are just starting. Um, we have some of our books that we've created over here. That's it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And if you got any other questions, we'll be here cleaning up for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs>